for inviting me to give this presentation. And I want to talk to you about the Neocort Nexus program, which is an early experience of a normal transcatheter mitral cordal repair system. So the Neocort DS1000 was the first transapical cordal replacement system. And there have been over 1,700 patients treated worldwide, 600 plus patients in clinical studies, and has generated over 60 publications. Now, the Neocort Nexus is a purely transeptal percutaneous system, and they've been first in human cases successfully performed so far, and the early feasibility study is about to begin in the United States. In terms of the R&D pipeline, you can see that here, the transeptal cordal replacement system can actually lend itself very nicely to an edge-to-edge -edge repair system as well, as you see here, and so far, preclinical studies have been done with 30-day results. And finally, there's a new generation transapical cordal repair system called the UltraCord for patients who are not amenable to transeptal cordal repair. And this is another alternative to these patients who can tolerate a transapical access procedure with a smaller profile. And the bench testing and preclinical testing have just been completed. Now let's talk about the neocort nexus for a minute. So the design goal of the nexus system is really to allow independent steering and for precise navigation to the target mitral pathology. And the idea is that it's based on clinically proven technology from the DS1000 transatypical system. It is the same in terms of ease of use and safety. You can precisely identify the pathology and be able to place a primary cord. You can reverse or retrieve it. You can put multiple cords on a single popperate muscle anchor. You can mimic a physiologic repair with mit native mitral valve function. There's no issue with mitral leaflet erosion. You actually simplify the beating heart tensioning with your transeptal approach. And finally, of course, with a core repair system, you preserve all future repair or replacement options whether it's surgical or transcatheter. So the leaflet capture, you can see that here is precise primary cordal placement supported by LCD optical monitor. This is very similar to the DS1000 system that we used before, but rather than four optical dots, we now use this two to be able to confirm leaflet capture. The anchoring actually is quite simple. The multiple cords can be actually used on a single anchor, and then you basically simplify the tensioning by with one single anchor that is located in the papillary muscle. And finally, by doing the active tensioning under in a beating heart, under TEE guidance, you really mimic the native construction and reconstruction of the mitral valve and also preserve all physiological function as well. So what has been the first human experience in the Nexus system? Well, there have been three patients successfully treated. The patients have been discharged typically on day four, and one patient who's just recently treated has been discharged since. There have been significant MR reduction that's achieved acutely and has follow up. You can see that here, uh, at least what we found so far, have been traced in all three patients. The anchor, one of the most challenging aspects of this procedure has been stable and durable so far, follow up with no pull through or dislodgement. And actually the patients, the first two of them has already completed six month follow-up. And the first patient, the last patient has just been completed their discharge and will be followed shortly. So here's some of the case, cases that have been done so far. As you can see, it's a 55 year male, prolapse uh, P2 with flail, NYHA class three, very low STS score, uh, certainly not a high surgical risk patient. You can see here, Mildly reduced EF of 42%, normal, uh, near normal to dilated ventricle here in this case, dilated atrium, paroxysmal AFib. And you can see that here the patient did have cancer uh, and also have other valvular disease as well. So the case planning involves both TE and CT. And the, because it's a transeptal system, we use CT to identify the fossa for ideal transeptal access, and also where the papillary muscles are for anchoring in the target. 
and also see the, what the distance might be. And you can see that here. Here's the pre-implant here. You can see the obvious P2 prolapse and flail, pretty advanced disease. And you can see that afterwards here, with complete leaflet restoration of co-optation of the posterior anterior leaflet. There's no aneuplasty involved because typically like the DS-1000 transapical system, we require sufficient anterior leaflet to annular ratio to be able to restore optimal co-optation. So again, this is a pre-implant. You can see severe anterior director jet with severe MR. And you can see that here in the post implant, no MR at all. It's a 3D picture. You can see a very large, broad P2 flail. Surgically, what you essentially would do the two options, either a limited triangular reception and then with uh, sliding plasty, or you can obviously also do portal replacement as well with an um, annual plasty uh, ring for a uh, band or reinforcement. However, uh, with the portal replacement, obviously you're not gonna have annual plasty solution here. So you can see that after the portal replacement with more than one pair of cords, the prolapse and flare essentially have been reduced. And you can see the MR went from severe to trace on the lower right corner. So here's a ventricular view of the repair valve. You can see that here. Anterior is on the top, posterior at the bottom. You can see the two cords here that are quite echogenic and then the papillary muscle anchor here. So this is procedure is quite echogenic and very echo friendly. I think this is one of the key aspect of this procedure. And we have seen that, of course, also with the transapical approach that has been developed previously. Now, as I mentioned before, one of the limitations of this class of technology is the anchor pull through and pull out immediately after the implantation or shortly afterwards. That has been the Achilles heel of other similar technologies. However, you can see that here at CT at 30 days, by anchoring the, the anchor, placing the anchor uh, directly at the base of the papillary muscle, you minimize any kind of gap uh, through the, across the trabeculi, and you can really secure it, just like what we do in surgery, where we place the base of the course at the base of the papillary muscle before we uh, tension it. And you can see that here, at 30 days in transparacic echo, the anchor placement, and also with really um, minimal MR. Now, how does it look in necropsy? So these are obviously uh, pig models uh, that were chronic animal implants. You can see that the anchor is right at the base of the papillary muscle. You can see the coarse origins at the bottom of the papillary muscle make it look more physiologic and anatomic. And you can see that the new cords are actually in the same fanning from the papillary muscle that is supposed to derive from. You don't want to crisscross these cords across the midline and that will not be an optimal repair. And you can see that by doing uh, at the anterior lateral papillary muscle, you maintain the native anatomy, uh, mimic the anatomy. You can see that in histology at 90 days, uh, that is completely healed and endothelialized and basically mimic the native cords. Uh, you can't really tell the difference between the two at all. And the anchor as well, you can see here, has completely healed with the adjacent papillary muscle. So in summary, the Nexus system is a very safe procedure. It's purely transeptal percutaneous venous system. It has excellent catheter performance maneuverability. It really mimics uh, almost like a mitral clip in terms of uh, versatility. But and th this uh, system has the additional advantage of having the optical confirmation you saw earlier to be able to show that you actually have successful leaf like grasping. And you can see that also you can place multiple cords at the same time on one single papillary muscle anchor. I think that's very important to, in terms of minimize the real estate and occupy these anchors. So far, at least with this system, the anchor has been stable with no pull through at six months. And you can see that the patient can be discharged relatively early, shortly after the procedure. So I have to thank you very much for your attention.